Shalom saints, shalom and good day. How are you all doing? Shalom, shalom on this wonderful day. Shalom, shalom saints on the second day of the month of January 2024, Tuesday. Shalom, Dwayne. Shalom, Feli Belly. Shalom, Sister Blessings. Brother Kieran, shalom. Need, shalom. Sister Zorain, shalom. Sister Golden Lattice, shalom. Shalom, Sister Navita, Sister Shannon, Analdo, shalom. Brother Byron, shalom. Shalom, Rodney, shalom. Sister Teresa, 72. Mrs. Shannon Polk, shalom. Zia Raj, shalom, Sister. Sister Portia Slick, shalom. Sister Andrea Watson, shalom. Sister Simone Morgan, shalom. Sister Beth, shalom. Sister Keisha Renee, shalom. Johnny the Saint, shalom. Sister Rose, shalom. Dan, shalom. Sister Shaquilla, shalom. Daddy Leo, shalom. Shalom, shalom. Queen, shalom. Shalom, Sister Kita, shalom. Shalom, shalom, Sister Karen Adeli Moss, Brother Barry, shalom, Brother Andrew. Shalom, saints, shalom, servants of the Most High God. The title for this live stream today is Demonic Altars at Your Church. Oh, yes, beloved saints, <laughs> the devil is desperate for more souls and the souls that he wants the most are the souls of the saints, okay? The Christians, the so-called servant of the Most High God. Beloved saints, it is time for us to be able to decipher who is in church that is a servant of God and who is a servant of the devil. Oh yes, remember goats and sheep at some point they are all mixed up together. But don't allow to be deceived by the goats. Understand that the wolves are out there. And unless you can fully um, identify them, you are going to be influenced by them. Oh, yes. You are going to be influenced by the wickedness. You are going to partake of the rituals. You are going to be offered on the altars to the enemy. Oh, yes. So today, saints, this is a ministration to, for you to not to miss. Okay? Just get a pen and a paper. There is a lot to write. And I want you to understand, saints, that God does not want us to be ignorant of the devices of the enemy. God does not want you to be a victim to false prophets, to demonic people pretending to be pastors, bishops, prophets, prophetesses. You are going to have to get knowledge today to be able to defend yourself against what it is that the enemy is doing, to be able to also defend your family. Okay? If you don't know how a demonic altar looks like in your church, you're going to be sowing into that altar. You are going to be standing and enter, entering into agreements with those altars. You are going to be consecrating your children. You are going to be allowing them to lay hands on you. You're going to allow them to imp do impartation, to speak over your life. And by the time you open your eyes, you could be in your grave already. And it would have been too late. I don't want anyone to perish in 2024, saints. Okay? I want everybody alive and well to fulfill God's promise. But you cannot fulfill God's promise if you are under the control, the dominion, the authority, the sovereignty of the enemy. It will not happen. Okay? So you are aware of the scandals that are going on in our churches and people are shocked. People don't understand how, how did this happen? How, how is it that this person was able to do so much? And it's not, 
very difficult to understand. It is because you don't know how to discern the sheep from the goat. Oh, yes. It is because you lack discernment and some because you have not been exposed to the tactics of the enemy. You don't know what is an altar. You don't know how, which doctors operate, what things they use. You think that your past is just very prophetic. You think that your past is just operating on another level of anointing and you don't understand that you are under a demonic priest. You are under voodoo priest. You are under an altar. And you are sacrificing to that altar daily, unknowingly. But this is the time, saints, to get some knowledge. Do remember to please get your Bibles ready. You're going to need the Word of God because I cannot unveil these things without the Word of God. You're going to need the Bible. The Bible is your, your support system for everything. Everything that a man or a woman of God is preaching needs to come from the Bible. We don't preach from what we think. We preach from what is written in the word of God. And it's at, of utmost importance that you have the Bible with you. And also, another way you can vet so-called man and woman of God is, is this. If you are submitting under a man or so-called man or woman of God, a, they cannot provide scripture for what they are saying. They cannot give you the scripture for the sermon. They cannot preach from the word of God. You are in trouble. Okay? If you notice, majority of these famous so-called preachers, pastors, prophets, whatnot, they don't, they don't quote scripture. They just talk and talk and talk like a motivational, um, uh, um, um, uh, you know, address. They're motivational speakers, but they are not by any means people that are using the scripture to preach. People that are being led by the Holy Spirit. Any man and any woman of God. They are guided by the Holy Spirit to go to Scripture, get the Scripture, find the Scripture, study the Scripture, meditate on that Scripture, sleep on it, and then come to you to, to tell you what that says the Lord. If I come here and I don't have the Scripture, log off, go about your business. This has now become something else. Okay? Everything must be backed up by scripture. Number one, how to identify these people. You want to identify a false prophet? Prophet, They are allergic to scripture. They don't like the word of God. Or if they do quote the word of God, they twist like a snake. They twist the word of God. They, they interpret it in a, in a way that is demonic, that has nothing to do with scripture. And most of the times, Whatever it is that they are preaching, they cannot find backing in the word of God. That's why they won't quote the word of God. Another thing, the reason why they don't like scripture, they don't like to read scripture, is that they know that they cannot quote that word that is um, condemning them. Oh, yes. The reason why they won't quote the scripture, because there is power in the word of God. The word of God is God's word. Is him speaking to us today. And they don't like the scripture because the scripture convicts them of their sin. The scripture is a sword that cuts down. They will quote important people from history. They will quote events um, and all sorts of things. But they won't use the word of God. But I don't want to preach now, saints. Let us leave that for the preaching. I was just introducing the title for this live stream. Demonic altars and a church. How to identify a demonic priest disguised as a pastor, bishop, woman, man of God, prophetess, prophet. Number two, how to identify an altar at your church. How, that, how, I, how is it that you can find out whether that is a pulpit or it's an altar erected there. Um, God, through the lens of the word today, is going to expose these people. And um, he gave me this word because some of you are thinking of joining certain ministries 
or you are in certain ministries, but you are a, a slave to a particular altar. You don't have much understanding of the word of God and you are lost. And that is why the gospel is preached to bring, bring souls to God. I want to remind you, saints, that um, every Friday is consecration Friday. So if you want to consecrate anointing oil, holy water, Fridays will be the day if you want to consecrate your child, your career, you want to consecrate your marriage, whatever it is, bring it on Friday, okay? Including your finances, whatever it is, Friday will be the day. I would like to also um, say to you all that we will be fasting uh, from the 15th of this month of January up to the 31st, okay? And the fasting will end with the Holy Communion. But if the, the, the day of the, the, the last day of our fasting falls on a Sunday, you know that we're going to have to have the Holy Communion on Saturday. Wonderful. I want to also um, be all you, make you all aware of fake profiles using my, my image here to ask you for donations for certain orphanages and whatnots and blackmailing you and all these different things. It is not me. I only have this page. Uh, I'm only here. I will never befriend you with an alternative page. Everything to do with this ministry is only here and it operates only here. Okay, so that has to be said because I don't want you to fall victim. All right, if you see such an account pretending to be me, report and block. All right, beloved saints, and keep this ministry in your prayers because there are malicious people, demonic people seeking to shut us down here. And it happened, I think, on Saturday, if I'm not wrong. But by the grace of God, we were reinstated straight after I appeal to the decision. So keep us covered because it is in your best interest that this live stream keeps live stream keeps going, okay? You need to learn certain things to be able to stand your ground with the word of God and not depending upon any man. It is very important in these last days that you are not relying on your pastor for salvation. You are not relying on your congregation. You are not relying on your family and you are only relying on God. And you can only rely on God by knowing the word. And you need somebody to teach. Okay? Hallelujah. It is important that you have dominion of scripture. That you are not entrusting your salvation at the hands of any person. Okay, it doesn't matter who they are, how anointed, how powerful they are. You need to be powerful in God. You have the same calling. God is calling you as well to be powerful. Okay, and I want to also say something. Any man or woman of God, prophet of prophetess, that is making you depend on their prayers, making you depend on their fasting, making you depend on their word, is not teaching you well. Because the Bible says, go and make ye disciples of Christ. It, the, the Bible doesn't tell us, the Christians, the believers, to go and make disciples for ourselves. No, no. It's telling us to go and preach the gospel. All of us, okay, are to recruit disciples for Jesus. All right. So any man or woman of God that is and, and is implying that if it's not for their prayers or for the ministry, you are not going to be able to survive. That is also against scripture and it has to be combated. It has to be fought. OK. All right. The minute I come here and I try to put myself at the forefront, something is wrong. Wrong. God is no longer in charge. Man is. And that is another dangerous aspect of modern day Christianity. The pastors, the bishops, the man and woman of God are now celebrities. The ministries are big corporations and the believers that are in that ministry are followers, are, are clients. Let us consecrate this live stream unto the Lord, beloved saints. I am here to remind you to conduct yourselves with holiness on this live stream. Okay, if the image freezes for you or the internet, don't type, log off 
and log back in, okay? Because it distracts me that I'm trying to preach and then I keep seeing frozen, frozen and then the, I begin to believe that I'm freezing as well and then everybody else gets derailed and that you are being a distraction, all right? I myself, sometimes I was here frozen, but I carry on. I left and I came back and you were still here. Business as usual for God, all right? If you have any questions, it is not the time to ask for questions. Questions is after, when we are done, okay? Because if you are in church and the pastor is preaching, you are not going to interrupt him in the pulpit because you have a question. You're going to respectfully write down your concern, your question, and then at the end of service, when the pastor is finished greeting everybody and everybody's going home and you can approach the pastor. Isn't that so? In here should be the same order. Just because it's a, it's a stream, it doesn't mean that we are now behaving like lunatics, like people who have no common sense, okay? It's only in, in the things of the devil that have no order and this, this, there is disrespect and, and all this these things in the things of God we must conduct ourselves accordingly all right I'm sorry to say but I'm, I need this year of 2024 I want certain things to to stay in 2023 I don't want them to migrate to 2024 okay hallelujah those of you that like to ask also personal questions where I'm from what is my ethnicity all that is not going to lead you to God and, and is not going to reassure your salvation. Where I come from, what kind of ethnicity I am, all these different things are irrelevant. You, will, you are going to have that information and still live here and go to hell. Is that of help to you? It's not of any help. Leave that in 2023. Don't bring it to, to here. Okay? In the things of God, it is not ethnicity or race or whatever it is nationality is none of that is your heart before god and may you come here not to connect with me i don't want you to connect with me come here to connect with god come here to stand in agreement with the word of god i will have to also be judged by god and stand before him and he will open the books okay so i'm a human being like yourself Another thing, I am not the one performing signs and miracles here. If God is revealing, if God is healing, if God is restoring, he is doing it. It's not me. I'm just a vessel as how he's using me today. He can use you tomorrow. Okay? So let us just have these things straight up. Because some people contact me as if I am in charge of signs and wonders and miracles. I am not in charge. I'm only here to point you to God. I'm only here to preach salvation, point you to God. If in the meanwhile, God wants to do a miracle in your life, God wants to reveal certain things into your, to you, hallelujah, glory be to God, I'm humbled by that. But I don't have the secret to your life, okay? That is God's number one mission. And it's in his hands, it's not in my hands, okay? So when you come here, come to receive the word of God, come to learn the word of God, Okay, because God has led you to come here to receive a certain word and leave the, I know I need braces, don't need to tell me, but guess what? I love my teeth the way they are. I'm enamored with them. God has done a great thing. You yourself, that your teeth, you, you are perfect. Hallelujah. I am very happy with how I looked. Okay, I am 43 years of age and I'm glad I'm alive today to give God glory. You with your perfect teeth, if you don't repent, you will still die and go end up in the pit of hell. Don't worry. Okay? Glory be to God. At least I have teeth. They are not rotten. So glory be to God. I'm satisfied with who I am. I don't need you, your approval or you to like me or don't like me. I'm not here for that. And if you don't like me, you can leave. It's a free world. Hey, <laughs> I'm not forcing you to be here. 
Beloved saints, let us consecrate this live stream unto God. I'm here very serious this year of 2024. I want to be more effective in what am I in my being here because I understand that if I fail in my duty, if I don't preach the word correctly, if I come here with nonsense, God is going to strike me dead and God is going to ju judge me and then will end up losing my salv salvation. So that's why today I'm a bit stern and, um, you know, like more than any other day. So let us pray, Lord, saints, to consecrate this live stream to God so that we will not be interrupted, so that we will not be sabotaged, that everything goes well, that Lord will use me to convey the message properly, that the Holy Spirit will, um, through me, convey the message today. Okay, saints, because it's all through the glory of God, by the power of God, for God, and through him that all things are possible. Hallelujah. Father, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you for this second day of the month of January the 1st, the second day of this year of 2024. Father, Lord, I thank you for your presence. I thank you, Lord God, for your mercies, because if you wasn't merciful this morning when you woke us up, we wouldn't be here. We would be already before you at your throne to be judged for our sins and iniquities and whatever it is that we we did wrong before you, Lord God. Father, Lord, we thank you for the gift of life. We are still alive. We have not um, ended up in hospital. We are in good health. Even if we have certain ailments, Lord, we are still alive and we are still counted as one of the living, Lord God. So, Father, Lord, I thank you for your presence. I thank you for the Holy Spirit that you give us every day to keep us going. Because some days we feel depressed, we feel sad, we feel sorrowful. When we look around and we see the things that we are going through, it is easy to become discouraged. It is easy to become uh, weak in our faith. But we every day have a, a, a double portion of the anointing of Elijah and Elisha. Every day your Holy Spirit is coming comforting us. Every day your Holy Spirit is pointing us to heaven and we thank you for that. We thank you for the sweet consolation of the Holy Spirit. We thank you for sending your son, Yeshua Yamashia, to die for us on that cross of Calvary, to pay for our sins, to purchase our freedom, our deliverance. Oh Lord God, from the hands of the wicked one. Thank you Lord Jesus for blotting our names from the uh, the book of hell and condemnation and doom and father lord we thank you for the gift of life lord god how many people did not make it how many people are in prisons how many people are sick how many people have lost everything how many people are homeless and and have no hope, Lord God. But every day you are renewing our strength. Every day you are providing. Every day you are healing and restoring and making sure, Lord God, that we make it. To make sure that our children make it. To make sure that we have a roof over our heads. That we have clothing. That we have food, Lord God. Lord God, we are indeed grateful, Lord God for all that you did, all that you are doing and about to do, Almighty God, in Jesus' mighty name. Father, Lord, as we repent from our sins and transgressions and iniquities up to 50 generations before us of those who offended you, Lord God, we pray that, Lord Jesus, you will arise in your power, that you will arise in all your might, in all your glory, in all your splendor, to begin to bind all principalities and rulers of darkness, wicked and demonic spirits, spirits which assignment is to steal kill destroy frustrate and cause us pain and sorrow and anxiety and paralyze us in our walk with you and cause division and oppression and attacks from the kingdom of darkness and all sorts of diversion. Oh, Father, Lord, cast all these principalities and rulers of darkness onto the bottomless pit of the abyss forever and ever, never to have access, Father, Lord, to us, to our children, to this ministration. Father, Lord, I'm asking you today, deliver us from any shutdown here, Lord, God, deliver us from every form of retaliation from the kingdom of darkness. Take authority over witches and wizards and warlocks and agents of darkness. Bind them with the everlasting chains of the Holy Ghost fire and render them all powerless in the mighty name of Jesus. Manifest your power, almighty God. 
manifest your anointing that breaks the yoke of the enemy, Lord God. And I thank you for your presence. And I thank you for the Holy Spirit. And I thank you for what is to take place today, Lord God, because I know salvation is about to be released and unleashed onto the four corners of the world. Summon your children that need to hear this word today, Lord God. They need to wake up from their slumber, Lord God. And I'm asking you, Father, Lord, use me as one of your many vessels here in the land of the living to preach the gospel so that many will be those who will repent and make amends with you and reconcile with you and be made whole. Oh, Father, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord Jesus, I saturate this live stream with your precious blood. I envelope each one of us here present and our children, Lord God, in your precious blood, Lord Jesus. Father, Lord, I'm asking you, be in control, be in authority, have all dominion, have all sovereignty over this live stream, over the prophetic hour, the ministration hour, over the hour of 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 of, of, of prayer and consecration to you, Lord God. Be in charge, have all dominion, have all authority. I'm just a vessel, Lord God, I'm a nobody. But Father Lord, I'm asking you today, use me, Lord God, for the sake of your children that are, are, are in need of a word, Lord God, that are in need, Father Lord, of a word that you will change their lives, Lord God, in Jesus' mighty name. Deliver us from every form of retaliation from the kingdom of darkness. Let every demonic and satanic arrow from the kingdom of darkness return to sender by fire in the mighty name of Jesus so that we will be protected, surrounded by your glory. Oh, Father, Lord, overtaken by the power of thy Holy Spirit. In Jesus' mighty name we pray, amen, amen, and amen. Saints, in this year of 2024, let me tell you something. Don't you ever feel embarrassed because of who you are, okay? Many people are not here. They've analyzed themselves because depression took, took place. They began to doubt that God was for them. They began to doubt that God was walking with them because somebody said a word, because somebody did something, because a word, you know, be kind to others, okay? We are going through a time that good people, Christian people are unaliving themselves and we are shocked when we hear what took place because it today is one man for himself. We don't, people genuinely don't care about one another and that spirit is in the church, unfortunately. That spirit is in the body of Christ and it needs to be purged out, needs to be uh, cast out, Okay? And I want to say this to you, saints. It is important that you know who you are in Christ. It is important that you also understand something more, prop, more important. This shell that we call body, okay? This is a, a vessel that God chose to put your spirit in it, okay? Don't... Give too much attention to your flesh, how you look. And, oh, yes, it's important that you are, you know, neat and well-dressed. And it's important for you to have good, a good self-esteem. But don't let your looks begin to stop you from praying, being in the presence of God, or your lack of good looks. Okay? Celebrate that that God has made you. You know, the way you look. Your eyes, your nose, your lips, your ears, your hands is connected to your assignment and your destiny. If God wanted you to look different, you would look different. But you look the way you are because that is what God has spoken over your life. It's connected to your destiny, to your assignment. And you have the eyes that, are con that will help you to reach your destination. You have the hands that will, will, will do things, that will, will put things in place for you to be able to fulfill your assignment. Don't worry about all these things. The devil is now shifting the church to be concerned about clothing and and, and, and garments and, 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 and frivolities and th because guess what this body here one day will, will get old if we are blessed to get old because even getting old today is a blessing okay if you are blessed to, to, to get to old age this body will one day fail you and will be laid to rest and your spirit will live on 
So why are we crucifying ours? How many people are butchering themselves because they don't, they hate themselves? Okay? God has made you the way you are for a reason. Okay? You're going to have to one day look at yourself in the mirror and come to terms with who you are. Okay? Own it. Okay? Own, own every inch of you that God has made it. And don't allow people to speak things against you and say things. Okay? If somebody has a complaint about you, said I like the way I am, you disarm them. Okay? They will not say anything else. Because why? You are satisfied with who you are. Beloved saints, let us go to the word of God. Book of Acts, chapter 8. Verse 9 to 24. Book of Acts, chapter 8, verse 9 to 24, and it reads, Simon the witch doctor. A man by the name of Simon had done witchcraft there. The people of Samaria were surprised at the things he did. He pretended that he was a great man. All the people watched and listened to him. They said, this man must be that great power of God. They kept running after him. For a long time, he fooled them with his witchcraft. So saints, you have the rest of the chapter so you can follow up after me, right? But the Bible is telling you here of a false prophet. A false man of God. Okay? Called Simon. He was a witch doctor, but because he was doing signs and wonders, okay, that means what? Um, he was prophesying, healing people. He was doing all the things that man of God do, great man of God do, like the apostles, the disciples, and so on and so forth. And people began to think that because he was doing all those signs and wonders, he was indeed a man of God, a man of great power, a man that had received power, anointing from God. And they kept running after him. They kept going to him for solution. They would not let him rest. They kept going for him to pray for them, to do things for them, to prophesy for them. And for a long time, he fooled the people of Samaria with his witchcraft. So I'm here to say something, saints. Just because you're so man called man of God or woman of God or prophetess or whatever it is. Just because they are doing signs and wonders and miracles. Just because at every service they are prophesying. They are healing. They are doing the most. And there is a lot of wonders in that ministry. That doesn't mean, saints, that God is in there. Okay? Signs and wonders are not a testament of a person being a man or a woman of God. All right? Unfortunately, we live at a time where people only go to ministries, only go to churches that are displaying prophetic gifts, healing gifts. The gift has become more important than the gift of salvation. I'm here to give you a wake up call. God's priority is not to be healing people and casting out demons and all these things. Because you can still go to hell. With that health concerned healed, with whatever situation, you can still go to hell. God's number one assignment when he sends a woman or a man to preach the gospel is for people to be saved, for people to repent, for people to become born again. Okay? It is important for you to be able to identify who is a man of God and who is not a man of God or else you will perish. Okay? You will suffer. In no occasion here in the book of Acts chapter 8 verse 9. 
to 11. He's telling us that Simon was preaching the gospel for people to repent and come to Christ and surrender to Christ. No. It strictly says here that he was doing signs and wonders. And people were relying on him for solution. Number one characteristic of false prophets. Witch doctors pretending to be pastors and bishops. Number one. They never preach salvation. Number two, they perform signs and wonders and miracles for you to depend upon them for everything. How many people are now, now crying because they hand over the control of their homes, their families, everything to these witch doctors. And now they're in poverty, in sorrow, in pain. Their children have been abused, misused. Their finances are in shambles. Because instead of them relying on God for the solution to all their problems, they decided to look at a man as their savior, as their Messiah. They, they, didn't, they didn't surrender themselves to Christ. They surrendered themselves to the witch doctor. Some of them now have the, the title of Papa, Mama. You've got to be very careful. Be very, very careful. You will see that these witch doctors as well, pretending to be pastors, pretending to be bishops and men of God and men of the cloth. They are always mentoring young people. There is always a spirit of perversion that follows them. Okay? Because they are not there to serve God. They are there to serve themselves, to enrich themselves. And if you care to just to see the signs, do the, the, have a little discernment. You will not fall, fall, fall victim to them. Gone are the days that people went to church to hear the gospel. They don't go to the churches to get the gospel. They go there for signs and wonders. They go there because they were told by a friend that there is a young man, there is an old man that is prophesying. There is an old man that is telling them all about their future, all about their past. They, 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 he's healing, he's restoring. People are getting jobs. People are flying out of the country. People are getting houses. And that has become number one priority to people. And guess what? Jesus Christ has warned us about this generation. Okay? That looks for signs. Okay? You are there looking for signs and wonders. You are not looking for God. Okay? You are not looking for God. You are looking for signs and wonders. You're going to get the signs and wonders. Okay? I'm taking you to Matthew chapter 12 now, verse 38 to 42. Matthew 12, 38 to 42. Then some of the scribes and Pharisees answered him saying, Teacher, we wish to see a sign from you. But he answered them, an evil and adulterous generation seeks for a sign, but no sign will be given to it except the sign of the prophet Jonah. For just as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of the great fish, so will the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the, of the earth. Three men of Nineveh, the men of Nineveh will rise up at the judgment with this generation and condemn it for they repented at the preaching of Jonah and behold, something greater than Jonah is here. The queen of the south will rise up at judgment with this generation and condemn it for she came from the ends of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon and behold, something greater than Solomon is here. And I'm here to say the words of Jesus. You are looking for signs and wonders. You are looking. Some of you come here to the live stream. Prophesy, woman of God. Prophesy. Are you here looking for Jesus or are you looking for a sign? Are you here looking to save your soul from eternal damnation? To make amends with God or are you here looking for signs? Because I'm telling you, if you are looking for signs, you are in trouble. You are a number one candidate. To be a slave for pro false prophets. 
You are the one who's gonna cry because they took your home, they took your job, they took your, 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 your savings, they took everything because you are looking for signs. You are not looking for God. When they saw Jesus, they did not want to surrender to Jesus. They saw Jesus face to face, the scribes and the Pharisees. They saw the living God himself in front of them. Yet they were asking him for signs. What a wicked generation. This is, this is what is going on in our churches. You go and ask 90% of that congregation if they want to repent. They won't they want repent. They are looking for a man that can do signs and wonders and miracles because they don't want to repent. They don't want to turn away from their wicked ways. They just want something from God. They want signs from God, but they don't want to surrender to him. I don't want you to that to be you. Okay? So I've given you two main signs to identify false prophets, prophetesses, false men of God, these witches and wizards and warlocks pretending to be servants of the Most High God. Number one sign, they hate the Bible. They never quote from it. Because if they are to preach the gospel, you will realize that you are in sin. You will run from your sin. You will repent and you would want to have a relationship with Christ. Therefore, you will no longer be a slave to them. Because if they preach the gospel as it is, raw and uncut, you will be free. And that freedom will allow you to question them and their methods and whatever it is that they are doing in that congregation. Number two, they want you to depend on them. They don't want you to be dependent on God. They don't want you to surrender to God and depend on God for your salvation. They want you to go to them for everything. They want you to depend. They want to make themselves your God. Come on now. The Bible says here that Simon pretended that he was a great man. They pretend. They That's why you will see them buying those long garments with long crosses. You will see them in a, a certain attire that is intimidating. That you look at them and you believe like there's some sort of something. Because... They have to have a package. When you are a man or a woman of God, you don't need a package because you're not advertising yourself. You are advertising the king of glory. You are telling, telling this nation, this wicked generation, that Jesus is coming back. Okay? You know that you are not a priority. You know that you need to decrease so that he must increase in you. And if God speaks through you, hallelujah. And if he, did, if he doesn't, hallelujah, same way. As long as you continue to be consistent in telling people the truth. You will notice that these false prophets, they brand themselves very well. So that you will look at them as if you are looking at God himself. That's why they need the gimmicks. They need the massive choirs. They need the organ at every little phrase that they say because it's all a show. It's entertainment. They're tricksters. They're, they're, they're performers. And you better pay them for their performance. And they want to live off your flesh. They want to live off you. They want the wool of the sheep. They don't want people to be free. If you notice with these ministries, people will defend them, defend them even when the evidence is there in front of them, plastered in front of them. They will still defend, def, defend, defend these people. They will defend them with all their strength. They will defend the undefensible. They will, they will stand as if it's like a cult. The leader can do no wrong because why? They are relying on him for signs and wonders. They are relying on their prophecy. They are relying on them to release a word because they are too lazy to go to the Bible and study the word for themselves. They are too lazy to fast. They are too lazy to seek for God. And that is why they are enslaved by, by them, by these witch doctors. But guess what? 
God is exposing them. Okay? God is exposing them by sending real man and woman of God. That indeed have the anointing that is not counterfeit. To challenge them. So that the people will know that look. It looks like this thing is, is a farce. Is a gimmick. Let us go to verse 12 from Acts 8. So we are in chapter 9. Acts chapter 8. Let's go to verse, verse 12. Philip told the good news of the holy nation of God and of Jesus Christ. Both men and women put their trust in Christ and were baptized. Even Simon believed in Christ and was baptized. He went along with Philip everywhere. He was surprised when he saw the powerful works that were being done. So God, because he saw how Simon was deceiving his children. He sent the real deal now. He sent, he, he sent the real deal, which was Philip. To then preach the real gospel, get people in order, get people believing in Christ, get people set free, baptized, born again, so they could receive the, the real gift, which is the gift of salvation. And I go forward, verse 14, the missionaries in Jerusalem heard that the people of Samaria had received the word of God. They sent Peter and John to them, that God sent even Peter and John. When Peter and John got there, they prayed that the new followers might receive the Holy Spirit. He had not yet come on any of them. They had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. They laid their hands on them and the followers received the Holy Spirit. Let me tell you something. 99.9%, .9 in fact, all people that are following false prophets, they do so because they don't have the baptism of the Holy Spirit. So that's why it is important. If you have not yet received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, that you do. Because if you don't have the baptism of the Holy Spirit, you are a number one candidate to be enslaved by false prophets you are a number one candidate to be deceived by them exploited enslaved then take it, taken into their own captivity say I need the Holy Spirit the Holy Spirit will show you things the Holy Spirit will point to scriptures the Holy Spirit will make sure you have dreams and you will seek God for answers come on now when Simon saw that the Holy Spirit was given when the missionaries laid hands on their people, he wanted to give money to the missionaries. He said, let me also have this power. Then I can give the Holy Spirit to anyone I lay my hands on. Peter said to him, may your money be destroyed with you because you thought you could buy the gift of God with money. You have not part or place in this work. Your heart is not right in God's sight. You must be sorry for this sin of yours and turn from it. Pray to the Lord that he will forgive you for having such a thought in your heart. I see that you are full of jealousy and shamed by your sin. Simon said, pray to the Lord for me that nothing you have said will come to me. See, Simon was not repentant. He was just afraid of the curse because he could see that, look, this God is very powerful. If he, his servants are saying that something is going to happen to me, I know it will. But he was not repentant. He just wanted the Holy Spirit to sell it, to make money, to make commerce. And that is another one characteristic of false prophets. Which doctors disguised as false prophets, they want to make money out of their gifts. We are not even talking about the gifts of the Holy Spirit because they don't have none. And if some of them once were real men of God or women of God, God removed the Holy Spirit, His Holy Spirit, because He could see the jealousy, He could see the greed. Another thing, God is not going to give any gifts to people who are jealous and greedy. The, the, the reason why many so-called men and women of God don't, 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 cannot operate in the prophetic, cannot operate in any gifts is because they are very greedy. 
they, 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 God knows that if I give this person the gift of prophecy, they are going to exploit people. They are going to charge for preaching. You see, many of these pastors, they have a fee for going and preaching into another congregation. They won't stay in one in anywhere. They have to stay in a certain five-star resort or a five-star hotel. They need a certain opulence or else they won't do anything. That's why they, 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 you can see that they are not anointed. Because most people that have a little anointing on them, they will never sell it. If they are asked to stand in agreement in prayer, they will do it. If the, God is using them, they will release without asking for anything. It's free of charge because they know that they did not pay to give the gift. The gift came to them because so God wanted to use them. So they know the implications of selling the gifts. So what happens to these witch doctors? They have a, another characteristic with them. They will seek for power from demonic places. They will travel to the African continent to be empowered by altars there. They will get powers from those altars to use it because they know that God is not with them. They know that they are not moving in, in, in the spirit, the spirit of the living God is not in them. So they need some sort of power to be able to perform such signs and wonders. They go to be empowered by divination, spirits of divination. And they do rituals. They consecrate they, they, their own churches, which are not the, not the church of God. And they will use those churches to make commerce and they will empower themselves using demonic rituals. And I tell you what is the danger of this is that by you being a part of that congregation, you are very much in agreement with their altars. Whatever sacrifices they do, that's why they're now going to Ghana alleging that they are going to preach the gospel there. They want to open churches in Ghana, in Haiti. And <laughs> don't be deceived. They've gone there because their altars are there. And they need to empower themselves. And by you being a part of that ministry, God will judge you for being in agreement with altars. God is going to judge you for the same sin of your own man of so-called <laughs> prophet or prophetess. There is a prophetess in America. She's an African-American lady. And she has an altar. If you go and Google online her name and her altar, you will find it there. She has an altar. And from that altar, she sells anointing oil, holy water. She also sells... Um, handkerchiefs, prayer shawls, you name it. But her altar is in Ghana. Because most of these prophetesses that they are priestesses for certain altars in Africa. They are lying to you that they are Christians, but their religion is African ancestral worship. That's why a certain bishop that has just been exposed was telling the congregation, if you trouble him, you trouble the ancestors in him. He's just telling you what is his religion. And this lady that is a prophetess is under him, is his spiritual daughter. Go figure. And by you buying this anointing oil, because you shouldn't be buying anointing oil, neither should you be buying any holy water, neither should you be buying handkerchief. It is free, saints. That's why we have Consecration Friday here on this ministry. Because it's not Sister Dalila that is going to anoint your olive oil or your holy water or whatever it is that you are consecrating to God. It's God himself that will anoint. All we do is stand in agreement and pray. You see the freedom in Christ? If you decide from your heart that today I want to bless Sister Dalila, it's from your heart. It's not because I send you a message. Oh, behold, unlock your next prophetic 
prophetic level by, by, by sowing a seed. If you go to these ministries, they have levels of seeds. First, they call those who have a thousand dollars, two thousand, then three thousand, and then it goes, and then it goes down up to fifty, and they don't take less than that. And by you taking your precious seed that God has given you to sow on that altar, you don't understand that you are in agreement with the gods that they worship. You are in agreement with the gods that are commanding them. Because I tell you why they go and empower themselves with these African deities. They go to the marine kingdom. And I tell you why they go and seek for these powers. Because they need to keep you enslaved. Some of you that think that the slavery system has is done and over with. No, some people are going and seeking powers from Satan, seeking powers from demons, demonic spirits to be able to enslave believers because they know once they get you hooked, once they enslave your soul and your spirit, not only they've got you, but they've got your finances and your children and whatever it is that you have. And it is very important when this year of 2024 that you become very spiritually solid in your relationship with Christ. Because the Bible warns us of such false prophets. And the, the Bible tells you of your responsibility to expose the works of dark, darkness. That is our job as the believers. Okay? And you don't have to listen to what I'm saying. You go to the word of God. I've already given you the scripture. Go and read what Simon, the witch doctor, was doing. He was enslaving the people of Samaria. He was living off them. He was making himself well established and rich out of, of them. Because why? He had some demonic power that was making him stand as one that was sent by God. Stop worshipping people. Just because a man said he has a prophetic word for you. Just because a woman said they, ha they can see something. Say, sister, thank you. I'm going to pray about it. They are seeing you in their dreams. Thank you, sister. I'm going to pray about it. Thank you, brother. I'm going to pray about it. Because you need to, to have confirmation from God. Because normally when you have a dream and it's something that is disturbing you, God is going to bring confirmation. That can come, for instance, you come into the live stream and the, the live stream, the, the, the sermon is exactly what you have dreamt. Confirmation from God. Or we could be during prayer time. The Holy Spirit will overtake the person who is praying. And he will pray exactly about that dream. But stop relying on man and women to guide you. Or to be mediator before, be, between you and God. Jesus is the only med mediator. Stop going to your pastor, to your man and woman of God for everything. Learn to pray. Learn to discern the voice of God. Learn to hear from God yourself. This is not a time for you to rely on people. This is the time for you to be spiritually independent from people and, and dependent on God for everything. Okay? You have to depend on God for everything. If God uses a vessel, hallelujah, glory be to God. But that shouldn't be your number one priority. Some of you, you are in agreement in covenants with demonic altars from false prophets, witch doctors, because you are a busybody person. Jumping from one live stream to another, prophesy man of God, prophesy woman of God. And you don't care to ask the Lord if the person prophesying is prophesying from God or not. That's why you always know me how I operate here. I always say, go to your prayer closet and ask the Lord, who am I? Go to your prayer closet and say, Lord, I don't want to be in that live stream with Sister Dalila. I need to know if she's a woman of God or no. I want to know if she is somebody that you sent and God will speak to you. 
And if God thinks that you shouldn't be here for whatever reason, he will speak to you as well. Okay? Some of you are yoked to an altar. That's why you are. And let me give you the signs that you are a slave to a demonic altar somewhere. Because, listen, we are not here dealing even with the demonic altars of those who go and consult witches and wizards and world, warlocks. What we are dealing with today is demonic altars at your church. That is what we are dealing with today. Church demonic altars, church demonic altars that been that have been erected in your church, pulpits that are altars for the devil, pulpits that are altars to keep you enslaved, and you are sowing into that altar, sowing your time, sowing your efforts, sowing your seeds, sowing everything. And you are afflicted today because of your carelessness, your inability to pray about things, your inability to rely on God and God, God alone to give you answers to your problems. As uh, uh, you can see here in the word of God that the disciples, the apostles were there in Samaria to preach the gospel so that people could come to Christ, know God, be baptized and have their independence. Not relying on man, but relying on Christ alone and be a congregation. They did not go there. Whenever you see the disciples going and preaching the gospel, the apostles sharing the scriptures, healing and doing everything, they, they were not there to promote themselves. They were not there to make themselves rich. They were not them, there to serve themselves. They are there to serve God and to make disciples out of the people that they were ministering to. I don't come here to advertise myself. I come here to preach the gospel. If you like it, you hallelujah, glory be to God, and you will be saved. But if you don't like it and you are upset, you have the same freedom to live because you are not here to connect with me. That's why when I get bombarded, bombarded with messages and messages and messages, and I have to put it out there, I'm not going to be answering 400 messages, 300 messages every day. I'm only one person, but I come here every day and I try my best to teach you the word of God. And moreover, I go and post it on YouTube so that when you live here and you want to verify the facts, you want to put the, 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 the word to, to what I released to you here to test. You have the live stream. You can get your Bible and says, this sister said so and so. Let me mm, 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 mm. fact check everything. Because the Bible is not mine. The word of God is not mine. I'm just a servant. And at the end of the day, I'm going to have to give an account to God. Let us go again, saints. Another scripture today is intense. Be ready. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14 to 17. Locate this scripture before I say something. 2 Corinthians 6, verse 14 to 17. Before we go to this scripture, I have to give you the signs of a person that is under a demonic altar. Okay? There are signs. If you are in a ministry and you are now beginning to... There is a certain alert from the Holy Ghost and you are beginning to think that, hey, perhaps I'm a victim. There are signs that will allow you to, you know... See if you have any of these signs in you. Number one sign, constant health ailments. I'm not talking about what little sickness that comes and goes. Saints, even I get sick sometimes. Even I get under the weather, but it comes, it goes. And I'm talking about a constant sickness and diseases that are very expensive to treat. And once one disease is gone, another one more expensive to treat comes. Number one sign. Number two, terrible nightmares. Nightmares that you are even afraid of going to your bed. You are terrified of even going to sleep because you don't know what nightmare is going to be this night. Thirdly, you have constant migraines. You can't even remember the time you didn't take a a paracetamol or a certain thing for the headache. You can't remember the last time you had a day without a headache. You are you find very difficult to pray. 
All you do is listen to your to your man of God and woman of God, but you yourself, it is impossible for you to be able to pray on your own. Not only that, you find very difficult to fast. You, you fast for one, two hours and you are hungry like a lion. You find extremely difficult to read the word of God. And even if you do read, you can't understand. It's like you were bewitched. It's like there is a veil that does not allow you to understand the word of God. Okay? These are signs. Not only that, you find very hard to live without perversion. Perversion is your, is your way of thinking and living. And in, your, in that ministry that you go, there is no word of repentance okay so these are signs and you 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 are very annoyed when somebody's praying for more than 15 minutes you become your spirit becomes restless if they are praying for 15 20 minutes you can't go that far by the three minutes you're already feeling like you can't breathe and you're feeling constrained these are signs and you better do something today and that something is to fully surrender to, to Christ repent because we all make mistakes we all sin and develop a relationship with Christ don't really the problem with us the body of Christ we want to develop a relationship with, with the man of God and the woman of God Yes, it is important to have a solid congregation. But you should be developing that same, that same desire that you have to be closer to the man of God. That desire, save it for Jesus. Obviously, there are going to come times that you're going to need the woman of God or the man of God to pray for you. There's nothing wrong with that. What I have problem with is you making that person your God. Second Corinthians 6 verse 14 to 17 reads, warning against idolatry. And guess what? The warning is not for the people in the world. This warning is for the body of Christ, the believers. Listen, the address here, the, 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 the ministration today is not for unbelievers. It's for us, the church. Okay? In fact, Today, today is for the church goers, the so-called Christians, warning against idolatry. Do not be yoked together with unbelievers. For what do righteous and wickedness have in common? Or what fellowship can light have with darkness? What harmony is there between Christ and Belial? Or what does a believer have in common with an unbeliever? What agreement is there between the temple of God and idols? For we are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will live with them and walk among them. And I will be their God and they will be my people. Therefore, come out from them and be separate, says the Lord. Touch no unclean thing and I will receive you. Come on now, somebody. The scripture today. Is for you and for me. We are the body of Christ. Okay? We are the body. And let me just take you to something that is shocking the body of Christ. A certain bishop that was at a certain party with an unbeliever, an idolater, a servant of Belial, taking pictures, uh, him leaning on his shoulder, on his chest. And for how long have been these so-called men of God been, been inviting a certain um, lady that is, interviews everybody? I'm not going to say names. How many of these pastors, these bishops has, have been inviting this lady that clearly says that there are many paths to God to come to her congregation, to serenade her, to, 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 to make her feel comfortable in her mess? 
How many of them were interviewed about the anti-clockwise movement? And they said that is okay. Uh, you know, the church has evolved and is evolving. And that was many years ago. When I saw that interview, I knew that this man is not of God. In fact, let us go down a little bit more to our level. Because those are the ones that are up there. But God is going to start, is going to judge the big ones and then he's going to judge us, your local little pastor. Very worldly. If you have a man of God and the way of the pattern of his thinking is very worldly, you can see that the first wife is all to herself, vanity. Nothing wrong with you looking good. I like looking good, having a nice outfit. I'm not saying that. I'm talking about that being the center of the ministry. It's all about who has more money in that congregation is given the fourth front seat. Those who are prayer warriors that are not well off financially, are not listened to, are not included, are not invited. That your little church that celebrates, celebrates every ungodly uh, holiday that is in the devil's calendar with, that, with ease, no problem. Everything that the world promotes They've got it. It's in their church. Everybody is welcome, yes. But you, as a man of God, you need to tell that person that Jesus receives you the way you are. But you mustn't stay the way you are. You have to change. You have to look like Christ. And Christ did not look anti-clockwise. That servant of God... That is overweight. His stomach reaches the, 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 it's this big. He's struggling to button the blazer of his suit. What time does he have to fast? You can see that he's indulging in food. These things are signs that some, all is not well. Okay. Those pastors that when a demon is manifesting in somebody, they can't cast it out. They will be screaming and shouting and the person is still possessed. Service ends and that person is still, you leave the person in church there and go home and they're still in church. Because your pastor cannot cast out the demon. That means that the world has infiltrated the church. Your pastor that is selling the sermons. There is a little kiosk at the end that burns the footage and you can buy. If you like that sermon, you're going to buy it to listen at home. Commerce in church. Some of your churches have coffee shops inside. What did Jesus say about all these things? How can we behave like unbelievers? How can we have the unbelievers as a standard? And even to, when, when it comes to our worship music, that the, the, the beat is worldly. Yes, the words are, are the word of God, but they are not even scripture. Before we had hymns, and the hymns were psalms or scriptures of the Bible. Now it's all about the beat. And I was shocked yesterday. A certain pastor that um, was a very famous gospel singer. That had a marvelous worship song. Had a, a club, made a club of his church and pulpit. And was playing secular music on the altar. And telling people, you're all to save for me. You're all to save for me. Being saved and being holy is frowned upon as, as something negative. I never thought I could live these days. The Lord Jesus is saying today to you, verse 17, come out from them and be separate. Touch no unclean thing and I will receive you because if you don't come out of that congregation, if you don't come out of that live stream, 
that the woman or the man are just diviners. It's not prophetic. Because let me tell you something. One thing about the prophetic. The prophetic comes to rebuke. The prophetic comes to tell you to tell you of your sins so that you will repent. Okay, that is number one assignment of a prophet. A prophet is not somebody that comes to make you comfortable with your sin. We are thinking that prophecy. Now we are so brainwashed that we think that prophecy. Oh, you're gonna get your breakthrough. You're gonna. It's this this year of 2024 that you're gonna buy a car. It's this year that you're gonna get married. Oh, it's this year that you're gonna turn around. A real prophet is going to say, if you don't repent, is this year that you're going to die. If you don't turn away from the wicked ways that you are indulging yourself in, is this year that you're going to be in a hospital? Prophetic comes for correction. Okay? It does not come for you to continue in your wickedness. So what if you get a car and the, the house of your dreams and you get married? You're still going to go to hell. These are material things. And let, let, let me give you my personal testimony. I have come to a stage in my life, okay, where I'm not pre preoccupied with material things. If I have something nice, I have something nice. Hallelujah. But I know that even if the things that I am asking God to do for me don't happen here in the land of the living, I know that when I go to my, my father in heaven, I will not suffer. Don't allow your dreams and your aspirations to take the place of God. Some of you, your dream, your aspiration has taken the place that God should take. You should put the effort to work hard. Yes, it is important that you work hard, that you earn a living. Please, that is not what I'm saying. But that same energy that you have to chase after your dreams, chase after the, 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 the things that you want for yourself, put that same energy to serve God. The Bible says, Seek ye the kingdom of God first, and all these things shall be added unto you. If you are chasing after God, chasing after the Lord, chasing after His holiness and everything that He is, everything will fall into place. Don't touch on clean things. You know, this freedom that we have to be able to connect with the world is also a curse at the same time. Because many people are being recruited by false prophets to serve their altars. These guys, they are disguised as pastors, as men and women of God. And they have an anointing, demonic anointing, that when they come here on these platforms, you will see thousands following them. Because they are promising people material things. If I came here to prophesy a car, prophesy houses, marriages, all these different things, and I just preached a little scripture that is telling you about the blessing of Abraham and this and the that, this platform would grow exponentially. But that is not the assignment. In fact, I pray to God, Lord, don't give me something too big that I cannot connect to the people on a level. Don't give me something that I cannot manage. Because I know I'm going to have to give an account for each person that tune in. Okay? What I said, when I said it, how I said it, and moreover, how I lived my life. So I'm here to say to you, saints, don't fall victim to false prophets, to charlatans, to liars. Okay? Learn to study the word of God. Study scripture. And there are going to come times where you're going to hear something and the Holy Spirit will just shake you like that. Nah, that, 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 that is not what is in the word of God. Study the word for yourself. 
You are not a person. Like back in the days, our forefathers couldn't write nor read. So they had to rely on the man of God. They had to rely on them to read for them. It is not the case today. You, can, you have the Bible available to you. If you don't have one, buy one. Stop jumping from one place to another because you want a prophecy. The Lord Jesus is, is, is warning you and me. Woe to that generation that is looking for signs. Don't look for signs. The Lord Jesus is saying. The, the scribes and the Pharisees, they demanded from Jesus a sign. Isn't that what we are doing today? Prophesy! Some of them have service and there is one man just in charge of the microphone to say, Prophesy! Prophesy! What, what is going on? What about telling you about your sin? What about telling you if you don't repent, where are you going to end? Why not telling you about your adultery, your fornication, your wickedness, your selfishness, your avarice, your materialistic heart or lack of heart? Salvation is paramount. It's the reason why you are a believer. is to make sure you maintain your salvation, you receive your salvation and maintain it. And the reason why you come to the live stream is not to look for signs and wonders and miracles and prophetic. It's to come to see if God is going to speak to you in terms of your heart. Is there anything in me, Lord? Search me, Lord. If you are not listening to the word every day, how are you going to repent? And also, saints, coming to, 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 to the live stream or going to your church to listen to the word of God is to keep you in check. We all need to be kept in check. I, for instance, I don't just stay here. I, when I leave here, I'm going to listen to a sermon. And, and sometimes God speaks to, to that, through that man of God. And I listen to that scripture that day. And the Holy Spirit will begin to show me things in my heart that are not right. No one is beyond reproach. Stop thinking that because you've accepted Christ, you don't need any correction. You don't need to, to listen to, 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 to any sermon anymore. You are saved that that's it. Now you are after the best, the next best thing. Now you are after the blessing. That is the wrong approach. That is the wrong way of approaching God. Let us go Second Thessalonians chapter 2 from verse 1 to 3. Second Thessalonians 2 from verse 1 to 3. The great apostasy. Now, brethren, concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our gathering together to him, we ask you not to be soon shaken in mind or troubled, either by spirit or by word or by letter, as if from us as though the day of Christ had come. Let no one deceive you by any means, for that day will not come unless the falling away comes first and the man of sin is revealed, the son of perdition. So saints, the word of God is telling you and me today that there are signs that indicate that Jesus is coming back. He's coming soon. And a sign is a great apostasy. You see this that God is exposing in our churches. Both big and small congregations. These scandals. People leaving the body of Christ. People going back to ancestral worship practices. People burning sage. People consulting this. It's in the Bible. The falling away has to take place first. So that what? People in church need to be so perverted and so comfortable with their mess. So that when the Antichrist reveals himself, they will worship him. No problem. That is why you see certain people defending their 
they, 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 they spiritual leader that is wicked and is doing wickedness. And the world marvels at how is it that these people can defend this wicked man, this person. Because the devil has to make believers, unbelievers, in, in that's but he, what he how he's doing is unbelievers are sitting in the bench in the church bench before the unbelievers were outside the unbelievers are you the one that you are tagging hey tell your neighbor you and them you will not be telling your neighbor in hell i'm telling you the enemy is making the church the body of christ so perverted so in so desensitized so comfortable with mess so comfortable in defending mess that when the antichrist reveals himself they will believe that the antichrist is is the spiritual leader they will believe that he is the messiah you see what i'm saying and they will follow him and will hand you over to him thinking they're doing god a favor it's coming, saints. Because we the ones that we are standing our ground, standing by holiness and righteousness, we are suffering because we are now fanatics. All sorts of names. You're too safe to be in this congregation. That's why the Bible says, here, yeah, come out from among them and be ye separate. Come on now. Let us go again. Circle 2 Corinthians chapter 6. Verse 17. Therefore come out from them and be separate. Says the Lord. Touch no unclean thing and I will receive you. Some of you are going to have to leave those congregations. Renounce those altars. Those pulpits that are not pulpits. But they are altars. You're going to have to ask God for forgiveness. Because you were sowing into those demonic altars. You consecrated your children to those altars. You allowed them to lay hands on you and do demonic impartations. You made vows and certain confessions. Thinking that you were doing unto God, but you were doing it to a demonic altar. You were doing it unto the marine kingdom. That's why no matter what you do and pray in that congregation, you go and pray. Your life is not going anywhere. You cannot pray, cannot read the Bible. You cannot go forward in life. You don't know your left from right. You don't know what is your assignment. You don't understand what is your purpose. You cannot see any gifts in you. You are always relying on your pastor to give you a word. Oh, you are relying on him to do a daily devotional. You are buying his books. You are doing the most, but yet you are afflicted. Because you have listened to the serpent speak through his mouth. You have received the venom of the serpent in you. That's why when you try to read the Bible, you are sleeping. It's the venom of the serpent. That's why when somebody's trying to warn you about that place, about that live stream that you attend, that you don't do anything else but waiting for them to come live so you can connect with them and you put your hand, connect with your papa, connect with, and when that one is through with, you go and seek for another one. And when you look at your account here, you are subscribed to 10, 15, 20 papas and mamas of God. You are in bondage, you are in slavery, but God is calling you today. Calling you to come out from them and be separate. Renounce their altars. Renounce their gods. Repent for sowing into them. Repent for allowing them to lay hands on you and your children. Come into your home to sprinkle the whole water in your home. Now your home is also an altar for the marine kingdom. The day they, they baptized you, they did not baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. They baptized you into the marine kingdom. That's why now you're having dreams that you are, you are swimming in the sea. You have dreams that you are drowning and God knows what else. Some of these women of God, they're witches. Just like Simon was a, was, 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 was a witch. Simon was one, was a witch doctor. 
Some of these women that you follow them, you buy the books, you buy the anointing oil, you buy the, 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 the prayer cloth, you buy whatever it is, everything, everything that they have going on, you are buying, you are following them. If they go to one state, you travel. If they go to another state, you are following them and you are bewitched. Because they are pretending to be a great man of God or great woman of God. Just like Simon the witch doctor. What has changed? Nothing has changed. The devil is using the same tactics and he uses people. Come on now somebody. How many of them are fooling you with their witchcraft? Follow me. Let me read again because some of you are still don't understand it. Acts chapter 8 from verse 9 to 11. A man by the name of Simon had done witchcraft there. They are doing witchcraft in your church. That church that you call congregation is a, a, a demonic place of worship. The people of Samaria were surprised at the things he did. Your congregation is surprised at the things that your pastor, your mama, your papa, your woman of God, your prophetess, your prophet does. He pretended that he was a great man. They pretend to be a great woman and a man. That's why they have garments. Some of them, they lack garments. They come with a certain scarf on their head. All sorts of things. Because they need to brand themselves. They, have, they need an appearance. They said this man must be the, the, that great power of God. When they are preaching. Hey, I'm filled with the anointing. The, then the organ play up oh, 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 oh. and then he faints or she faints come on somebody and then somebody comes to hold them down because they are unstoppable now and they do all those gimmicks to make to tell you that they are a great power of god and they begin to prophesy about you no boyfriend we start no boyfriend wants you and your boyfriend instead of telling you that you are in fornication because that should be the prophetic the fact that you are seeking for boyfriends and girlfriends to like you and be steady with all of them something is wrong yes and and the bible says they kept running after him you cannot sleep at night he, i wonder what papa is doing and then you have all alerts for when they come up online and he be, and all of them for some certain reason they have a a, a throat concern they, eh, eh, that is how they are their voice they have to speak in a such a manner all gimmicks the bible goes further and says for a long time he fooled them with his witchcraft. They are fooling you with their witchcraft. They are telling you to come on Monday. Oh, deliverance service. And the deliverance service is for them to get a bottle of water and be pouring on you. And also you're stretching back and forth. And you don't understand that some of the ushers had a meeting with him to jerk forward, back and forth, so that you will believe that some sort of power is there. And you don't understand that the ushers are possessed by, by demons. You don't understand that the prayer warriors of your ministry are demoniacs filled with legions and your pastor is number one demoniac. And when he is going in the pulpit to prophesy, he is manifesting spirits of divination. Your pastor can never tell you to live that fornication life. Your pastor cannot correct you on your adultery. Your pastor cannot tell you to leave the world and follow Jesus. Your pastor never says that Jesus requires a standard of holiness. When your pastor speaks about Jesus, is that Jesus made himself poor for you to be rich. And if you are to connect with the man of God, and they also always tell you to connect with the grace that is upon his life instead to tell you to connect you with God. Connect with the grace upon this ministry. Connect with the anointing that is in this ministry. Oh, well, who is here? God is showing me somebody. Oh, sow a thousand dollar seed. Oh, somebody here still needs to sow an eight eight thousand dollar seed. And you are there taking your children's inheritance and giving it to him. Meanwhile, his wife is traveling. To the Middle East to buy gold and jewelry and God knows what else. They are sending their children to private schools. They are buying mansions, resorts to make businesses. And you are in poverty. 
just jerking in that church back and forward. Just shaking yourself like a demoniac that you are. Because if you don't know Jesus, you will be a demoniac. Because that is the an environment for demons to, the, 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 where demons showcase, display their tricks through the, through the people that are available to him. If you want to be upset, be my guest. I'm not here to make you happy. That's not the assignment. And let me tell you what's going to happen to us all. The body of Christ. Both big ministries, medium ministries and small ministries. All of us. Without any discrimination. In closing. First Peter. Verse 4 to 17. First Peter. Verse 4 to 17, and it reads, For it is time for judgment to begin with God's household. And if it begins with us, what will the outcome be for those who do not obey the gospel of God? Come on now. I'm not here to preach what I think, saints. I'm giving you the word of God. First Peter. From verse 4 to 17, for it is time for judgment to begin with God's household. God is judging us. You that follow God because of what he can give you. You are following him because you are poor. You are following him because you want to have a bank account. You are following him because you want to be healed. You want to get married. You want to prosper. But you don't follow him because he is the source of your life. He's the one who has died for you to inherit everlasting life. In fact, everlasting life is not on your top priority. Your top priority is here in the land of the living. You must live high in the land of the living. And that is your priority. I have bad news. For it's time for judgment to begin with God's household. It's not going to begin in the world first. God is going to judge the church first. Because we were the ones that were given the commandments. We were the ones who received the commandments. And we said, yes, we receive it. We accept it in Jesus' name. And we're going to abide by it. So he's coming for us. The custodians of the commandments. Let us go forward. And if it begins with us. What will the outcome be for those who do not obey the gospel of God? You that are bragging that you go to church, but in adultery. You that are bragging that you are under a certain man or woman of God, but you are a liar, a cheater, a gossiper, a slander, an anti-clockwise person, an immoral person, a person that still visits and consults agents of darkness, witch doctors, but you are bragging because you are under a powerful man of God. So do you say. I'm telling you that is not. Listen. Better repent. Because the Bible is asking is a question. That means hey. For those of us when there is calamity. Hey. And we put our hands like this. That is, that is the kind, kind of exclamation is here. Kind of question. What will the outcome be for those who do not obey the gospel of God? See that emoji? You can type it there. Hands on your head. Hey, it's coming. It's, the matter is, is when? It will reach your home. When will it reach your house? Because it's starting in the church, but your house should be the dwelling of the Lord. Your house should be the house of the Lord, but your house is the house of the devil. Everything that the devil likes is in your house. You possess it. Burning sage, you've done it. Zodiac, you in it. Tarot cards, oh, count me in. Altars for ancestors in your home, you in it. But because you go to a certain congregation of your little, your little bishop, you think that, hey, I'm okay, I'm good. After all, I come from a Christian home. This is not the time where you come from. The Bible is saying here, what will the outcome be for those who do not obey the gospel of God? You know the gospel, but you are refusing to live through the lens of the gospel. You know the word of God, 
but you are refusing to abide by it. You know the word of God, but you are still drinking, getting drunk. You know the word of God, but you are still sliding on the side to go and sleep with the boyfriend and the girlfriend. Oh yes, you, 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 you say you are a man of God, but you have corn in your possession in your phone. Some of you, if I was to go to your phone now, the music that you have there, you wouldn't be happy if a fellow Christian saw the kind of music you have in your phone and that you listen to. Bump and grind. That's your life. Because, hey, God has no problem. That singer said, he said, he, I, I, I don't see nothing wrong. Now he's seeing that something is wrong. He's in jail. He was telling us all what he was about, but you are still listening to him. These people that are grinding on one another, pictures being available for them to see. They are defending them. Who has no sin? Cast the first stone. That sin, I'm a, I, I don't have. I will cast the stone. You're going to hell. Oh, yes. You know why they cannot, they are backing up one another? Because they have no standard of holiness. Yeah? Power bottom. They're in it. Deceiving people, doing the most, do, participating in FOs, they're in it. So how are they going to correct others? What They have no standard of holiness. If you see somebody that, that is your friend and you go to a shop with them and they're stealing, you're going to say, hey, hold on a minute. You are not about to do that with me. Drop it there. And you are going to tell the supervisor of that shop, listen, this person is trying to take something. Hey, I'm not in it. Want it? Because you know that that is not how you roll. If somebody is sending you an anti clock message to you, you're going to say, hey, mm -mm, not me. I'm not a person. And you're going to be offended. And you're going to call out the person. You're going to rebuke them. But if you are doing the same thing that they are doing, well, where is the rebuke? You have no moral compass. You have no moral standard to rebuke anybody. Because you are with them in their sin. And I'm not saying that our lives were perfect when we were in the world. But we are not. Uh, listen, we are not in the past. We have left the past. We have left our, our sinful nature behind. We have left the mess behind. We are a new creation in Christ. And the Bible says. Book of Romans chapter 8 verse 1. Behold, we are a new creation in Christ. There is no condemnation for those who are in Christ. We are in Christ now. What we did in the past, God has forgiven us. God has rolled a stone over that. It's gone. Today, we are holy. We are righteous. And we are keeping the commandments. We don't care if you offend mom and dad. We don't care if you offend siblings. We don't care if you offend friends. We are not here to please them. We are here to keep the commandments. And if that is going to cost us, so be it. As long as it doesn't cost our salvation. We are good. Come on now, somebody. I need somebody to come and agree with me. Come on. May the church say amen. It's like a parent who wants to tell their child, don't smoke, causes lung cancer, but they are smoking. They cannot. They have no moral compass. But we are, are, are keeping the commandments. We've left the drunkenness behind, the lying, the cheating, the anti-clockwise behind. We left everything to follow Christ. And we said we don't want this anymore. We want this holiness that has been promised to us and we want these commandments. We want to receive them and we want to keep them. So help us God. And we are always trying to look for sermons that we can learn something new. That we can investigate whether we are lacking. That can rebuke us. We are reading. We are studying the word of God. By no means we are perfect. We are still in this body. But we are not getting up in the morning to go and follow the devil. Mm -mm. 
In fact, when we get up in the morning and we finish saying our prayer, say, I'm not a candidate to serve him. He is not my friend. He is not my companion. I am going to do whatever it takes to serve my Christ. And you get your Bible. And sometimes if you cannot read your Bible because you're cleaning, you're cooking as the mothers, or you are at work, you have your, the Bible on audio, but you are constantly in the presence of God. And you are following preachers that are pulling you to God, that are keeping you in the presence of God. You are not following those promise you heaven on earth. Some of you, the problem that you are being deceived by false prophets, you want heaven, the heaven on earth. You want mansions. You want expensive vehicles. You don't want a roof over your head. That is not your prayer. You want a mansion. You don't want a car. That takes you from A to B. You want a, a, a luxurious vehicle. You don't want food on your table. You want to dine and wine with the mighty. With the movers and shakers. And you are willing to sell your soul. You are willing to, to pay the price. To live all. To, to, to experience all that. You are not waiting for the great supper of the Lord in heaven. You want to dine and wine with the uppers with the movers and shakers, with the men of timber and caliber. And some of you, you are willing to sell your dignity. Go to certain countries where they will be defecating in your mouth, urinating in your mouth for that check, for that money. And you don't care. Even if you have to hurt people, even if you have to sell your soul, even if you have to do whatever, even if you have to go... And surrender to your man of God that is telling you to do something with him. You will do it. Because the ends for you justify the means. But it's never too late. Perhaps you heard the gospel today. And it's touching your heart. It's moving something in you. Perhaps now that you heard the gospel, the bewitchment has been completely paralyzed by the hand of God. God has removed the bewitchment of your eyes because you were in this ministration receiving the word of God. And you are beginning to think, considering your eternal destination. I praise God for you. I praise God. Because I have no power to convince anybody of their sin. That is the job of the Holy Spirit. But I'm here as an oracle of God to tell you that if you don't change, either Jesus is going to come to judge the living and the dead, and your judgment is not going to be good. You see, just because you are part of a congregation, that is not assurance of salvation. Do you know that your, your workplace is a congregation? But the congregants are there to offer their labor to that certain corporation or institution. Go and look at the, 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 the genesis of the word congregation. Some of you think that congregation he is my church. Hey, he, my, my pastor. There are congregations of wicked people and some of your congregation is just that. Congregation of wicked people, liars, magicians, witch doctors, trist, tricksters, charlatans, immoral people. Let us pray, saints. I hope you are going to come out of this live stream repentant of your sins. You see, the word of God comes to, tells you, to tell you what is wrong and what must you do to make it right. And to make it right, all you need is to confess Christ as your Lord and Savior. Surrender your life to him. Change. Turn away from your wicked ways. Stop doing that that you know well and good. That is demonic, satanic, and there is witchcraft. Repent while there is still life in you. Because the Bible says there is no repentance in the grave. When you are dead and gone, 
you will not repent. That is the judgment. The Bible goes forward and it says, it is once appointed for a man to die and then the judgment. Let me tell you this. The minute you close your eyes here in the land of the living, two things will happen. If you are a believer, angels will come and take your soul directly to the throne of God. And if you are a non-believer, a liar, a cheater, a greedy person, a slander, a drunkard, an anti-clockwise person, an immoral person, adulterous, fornicator, I don't know. Demons will come to escort you to the presence of God because you now their property. And they're just escorting you there to get your judgment so they can take you to where you need to be. Don't be those people. Don't be that person. Because you simply won't surrender. Because you don't want to believe that you will happen. Whether you believe it or not, you're going to be judged. The Bible says it. Whether you believe it or not, the devil believes in you. And he, 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 he will do the most to get to your soul. Whether you believe or not, it's coming. Oh, but Sister Dalila, what if you are wrong? If they say to you, look, don't cross this lake because there are crocodiles. Are you going to still argue with the person? Ah, maybe you are lying. Let me, let me take a chance. You won't. And that is your mortal life. That is just your mortal life. What about eternal life? Somebody saying, hey, it's about to come. Get ready. A wise person will say, mm, even if she's lying, might as well I just comply. Because it's supposed that her God turns up. At least I'm serving him. He's not going to cast me away. But some of you want to gamble with your life. If a person said to me, don't cross this lake because there are crocodiles, I'm not going to stay there arguing with him. Are you lying? Are you telling the truth? <laughs> me, I'm gone. I'm making sure I'm nowhere near it. And neither my children, neither anyone I know, or, or even that I don't know. I'll say, look, let us be cautious here. But you are still there. Gambling. Russian roulette. Carry on. You can't say you have not been warned. If you want to go to your live stream where they are prophesying that you have $500 in your account and $250 in your savings account. If you want to go to the live stream where they are prophesying that, hey, I see marriage for you. I see an open door. Carry on. It's a free world. Do what's best for you and live your best life. But you will do it knowing that you've been warned. You will do it knowing that, <laughs> you know, the warning was given to you. You cannot say to God, eh, no one told me the truth. God is going to say, mm -mm. somebody told you. 2nd of January, 2024, I sent my servant to tell you. And some of you, God will even call me if I'm in heaven. Sister Dalila, come here. Speak to this. Wasn't she on your live streamer? Ah, yes, yes, her name is on. Yes, yes, she was. And the angels of God, yes, yeah, we were there on that ministration as well. And we took notes of her name. We took notes of his name. You will not escape. You will not escape. And God has cameras there. He has his, his holy television. He will play the live stream that minute where I was saying it. So then what, you're going to argue with God? Going to fight with him? Hmm? You can come here and insult me, call me all sorts of things. I'm a human being. Guess what? I don't care. Because it takes a lot of, a lot of courage for me to come here with my flaws and whatever it is to tell you the truth. But I'm obeying God because I'm not here to please you. But I came and I did it. Now you have your own responsibility. And some of you are going to have to come out of certain places and be ye separate. If you want to see the face of Almighty God, you're going to have to do it. You are going to have to stop touching unclean things. 
so that God can receive you. And when I say God receives you, saints, including your prayers. God is not going to answer prayers of those who are touching unclean things with unclean people. In agreement with the ungodly and the wicked and the unrighteous. In fellowship with them. That's idolatry. If your friend that is unsaved is inviting you to his birthday party. And you know that there is going to be secular music. Alcohol. And you still attend to that event. You fellowship there. You are touching an unclean thing. You are unequally yoked. You are going to partake of the sin and you're going to partake. God is going to judge you. There is no escape. Okay? They follow the devil. They are doing, doing, doing those signs where they were normally the ungodly people. This is how they go. And you are there with them in the picture. Hey, believer number one. You are there. Carry on. In the assembly of the wicked. Oh, yes. In the assembly. God is not going to say, hey, that one in the assembly is mine. He's not going to claim you. You are for the streets. You are not for the streets of gold. You are for the streets of sin. Because you are in agreement with darkness. Oh, yes. You are there just like one of them. Some of you, 40 plus, an idiot. Some, some other 40 plus people at home relaxing. You can't relax from one club to another. You don't even care to investigate that these people are not my age group, but you are there. You, you, you are behaving as if you are still 18. Wake up. Is 40 plus, is 50 plus, is 60 plus. But you are still there outside of the club like this. With one bottle of something showing the kind of drink you drink. And then on Sunday, you've gone to crossover service. You are crossing over to hell. You are crossing over to the pit of hell. You ain't crossing over nowhere else. Come on now, somebody. Some of you, your own children, can't add you on social media because you will embarrass them. They don't claim you. They won't claim you. It's 2024, but you are still want to believe that is, is 1986. Wake up. Others are saving for retirement. Others are now thinking of a plan, retirement plan. You are there thinking that, hey, I'm enjoying life. You ain't going to be enjoying in a nursing home. When your children now don't want to associate with you. Some of you is your parents won't add you to social media. Because they don't want the congregation to know how you live your life. Your shorts is up to here. Your skirt is up to here. All this is out. This is the, 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 your, your skirt. Your top is just covering here. So your mother won't add you onto her social media. For what? So that, that Mrs. Bertha and C Sister Martha begins to make a compilation of, of every night out that you have. And you are twerking. So when mom and dad don't want to be your friends on social media, oh, mom, won't you promote my business? Me? Mm -mm. No, sir. You are my child. I love you, but I have no, nothing to do with you. Some of you have forgotten that you are parents. And those pictures that you took and you posted online, they are now being shared online. You, you think that your kids are not going to grow? Come on now. You are coming here drunk on TikTok. Hey, Merry Christmas. Hey, hey, hey. Because your child is two, three, and four, and five. But don't worry. The footage will be saved. The internet doesn't forget anything. It will be pre-posted. Oh, yes. 
Your time is coming. So save yourself some shame today. Accept Christ so that the Lord will help you with that embarrassment that you've just committed. That the Lord will take your case and work with it. Because some of you, your case, only God. Only God to have mercy. Some of you, God is going to even relocate you to another town because that's your town that you live in. Your name is tarnished. You are not going to be able to start a fresh day. You damage yourself. So allow God. Give God a chance. All of us had, had a come to Jesus moment. What's taking you too long? Your pastor is not going to save you on that day. Your man of God here on TikTok that is lying to you that in 2024 you are going to manifest wealth, manifest. All you're going to manifest is STD, a certain other diseases. That's all you're going to manifest. And you're going to manifest shame and reproach and poverty because you don't listen. Don't worry. All of us here, God is saying to us, the judgment is coming. It begins with God's household and it begins with us. What will the outcome be for those who do not obey the gospel of God? You call yourself a believer, a woman of God, a man of God, but you come here on TikTok posting yourself half naked, dancing, jerking, gyrating, and you think that God is not going to judge you. Oh, yes. And when the, the believers are telling you that that is wrong, don't judge me, don't judge me. Don't worry. First Peter 4, 17 is judging you already. For it is time for judgment to begin with God's household. Don't worry. God is telling you that the judgment will begin with you. You that you come here naked, half naked, dancing, but then you have Psalm 23 as your main cover. And then one day you are posting scripture. The next day you are shaking what mama gave you. Don't worry. The Bible does not lie. And he's asking you what will be the outcome. For you who do not obey the gospel of God. Oh, yes. Oh, but sister Dalila, I'm too young. You are old. I'm too young. I have to enjoy. Continue to enjoy. You will not say in hell there is no young or old. Everybody has a space. Don't worry. Because you're young, you, you think that you cannot die. You will die. Go to hell and leave us the old, old sheep here to cry. Don't worry. Don't worry, my dear. Being young is not an... Uh, an assurance that you're not gonna, you, God cannot summon you. Oh, these older women like to talk too much because they had their time, they're now old. Some of you saying that you're 20, you look worse than me. At least I am 40 plus. You're 20 something, you're tired. You need God to inject his DNA in you to reinvigorate you because you look like you live life more than me. Because when we were young, we didn't have access to so much alcohol. We didn't have the money. Hmm? I'm 43. Yes, I'm old. But you are talking about us old people. But you, your case is worse. You are tired. And so is your hometown is tired of you. All the young men are tired of you. You, the young men as well. All the ladies say this is damaged goods, baggage men. They don't... They don't even consider you. You, they, they had, you, you are damaged. Only the, the Lord to have mercy and take your case. Only Jesus can take the will for you. But you are still here fighting. Those who are preaching the word of God. Fighting. There is no us you need to fight. Fight yourself. Oh yes. Hmm? Some of you, God is going to have to do a transformation. DNA exchange. Resurrect you. Some of you, God is going to have to resurrect your liver. Resurrect all your vital organs. Because you used and abused everything. Don't worry. 
Leave us to hold people. Concentrate on your problem. You have bigger problems than other people and what they think. Judgment is come. And those who do not obey the gospel, what will be the outcome for them? That is, should be what should concern you. Let us pray, beloved saints. And you, Sister Karen, you are not dying, you are living. Don't, don't curse yourself, okay? All right. I don't want to speak anything <laughs> but life, all right? Let us pray, saints. Father, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you for this sermon today, Lord God. We thank you for your words today, Father, demonic altars at the church. Father, Lord, the mess is out there for everybody to see, Lord God. We've seen it in our leaders, we see it in our communities, we see the mess in our homes, Lord God. And we see how low we have gone, Father Lord, down in the standards that you have given us, the commandments. We have gone down so low, Lord God. We have made a spectacle of ourselves. We have embarrassed ourselves even before unbelievers because right now, the world is looking at us collectively as fools, perverted people, people who have no standards, no morals. And the word says that we are to come out from among them, Lord God. We are doing just that today. We come before you to repent on behalf of our leaders that have left the pulpit to follow the devil, on behalf of our spiritual leaders who have abandoned the faith to go after money and van vain things and father we repent as well ourselves because we have been entrusting men for our salvation instead of turning to you repenting daily and keeping the commandments father lord we all guilty if neither guilt for the sin guilty for us by association or guilty for keeping quiet and not saying anything either way lord god you're gonna judge us all Henceforth, we come before you, O Holy Father, O King of glory, to fully repent from all our sins that we have committed against you and those made in your image. We repent on behalf of our parents, grandparents, great-grandparents, and other forefathers up to 50 generations before us, Lord God. We repent for the sin of idolatry, the sin of witchcraft, the sin of greed and the sin, Father Lord, of perversion, greed, and all other things, Lord God, that are demonic and diabolical. Lord, we repent. We are not hiding our sins from you. We are asking the blood of your son, Yeshua, to blot out all our transgressions, all our iniquities, all our sins, up to a hundred generations before us and we command every witchcraft power assigned to manipulate us and our destinies to be destroyed in the mighty name of jesus any witchcraft power from any diabolical association flying to arrest our progress fall down and die by fire in the mighty name of jesus every wicked power assigned to attack our marriages Backfire in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, correct anything that is wrong with our foundation. In Jesus' mighty name. Thou power of the desert, come out of our lives and destinies now in Jesus' mighty name. Every witchcraft agent that is fighting against our glory, be frustrated in the mighty name of Jesus. Every wicked power that is sowing tears into our dreams and marriages, we pull you out by fire and by force in Jesus' mighty name. We reject every evil garment of failure and attacks prepared for us by the haters of our destinies in Jesus' mighty name. Every witchcraft power that has the desire to frustrate our Christian life. You are a bloody lie. Run mad and be destroyed by fire in Jesus' mighty name. Lord Jesus, have mercy on us. 
If there is anything the devil is still holding against us to block our breakthroughs, forgive us, O Lord, and cleanse us by your precious blood in Jesus' mighty name. Afflictions of the wicked shall not rise up a second time in our lives in Jesus' mighty name. Any powers that has vowed that we will not see the end of our afflictions, we are not your candidate. So therefore, use your own hands to paralyze your hands and legs in Jesus' mighty name. Father, Lord, any diabolical and demonic involvement with demonic altars it, at any church that we attended. Father, Lord, I pray, forgive us. We break covenant with those evil demonic altars at any church. Father, Lord, if there is any seed we have sown to these ministries, that, that seed is speaking against us. That seed is speaking against us and sending infirmities, afflictions, and poverty and limitation and stagnation, we withdraw that seed in the mighty name of Jesus. We break the agreement with these demonic evil altars at any church we have attended, Lord God. Father Lord, any laying of hands, Father Lord, on our children, on ourselves, Father Lord, I pray that the blood of your son Jesus will cancel the evil effects of that demonic laying of hands, of that demonic impartation, of the evil spoken words in the mighty name of Jesus. Father Lord, I'm asking you today. Bring to our remembrance any participation in any congregation that Father Lord has, has been infiltrated and hijacked and possessed by witches and wizards and warlocks. Father Lord, so that we can repent, so that we can sever the agreements with these demonic altars, Lord God. Father Lord, give us the discernment that we need through the Holy Spirit, not to fall victim of any demonic altar at any church. And if the churches we are attending are demonic altars, Father, uproot us from that place. Take us out. Redeem us, Father Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. And Father, we are here to listen to your commandments. You told us, Father Lord, that you will live in us and walk among us. And that you will be our God and that you, we, we, we will be your people. According to 2 Corinthians chapter 6. So Father Lord, we sever any yoke with any unbeliever, with any idolater, with any wicked person. We sever every demonic fellowship with those who are walking in darkness, pretending to be of the light in the mighty name of Jesus. Father Lord, we refuse to be bewitched by any witch doctor. We refuse to be bewitched like the people of Samaria that were bewitched by a witch doctor, Simon, pretending to be a man of God. We refuse to be under demonic signs and wonders from any witch doctor, pretending to be a man of God in Jesus' mighty name. We sever the agreement, Lord God. And we come to the marvelous light of your salvation, Lord God, to confess you as our Lord and as our Savior. Father, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus, I am asking you today, Lord God, separate us from every ungodly congregation, ungodly gathering, Father, Lord. Father, Lord, we make a vow today that we will pray. We will spend more time in prayer. We will not touch any unclean thing that will defile us and make you not be able to receive us. Father, Lord, we come out of every demonic, ungodly fellowship. Father, Lord, whether a prayer group or a live stream that we follow. Or maybe, Father, Lord, any soul tie with any pastor, with any prophet. We sever the agreement. We come out. We declare ourselves separate by the blood of your son, Yeshua. And Father, we pray. Fill us with your Holy Spirit so that the Holy Spirit will show us, Father Lord, red flags. So that the Holy Spirit will begin to minister to us, showing us hidden things that we cannot see it with our human eyes. So that, Lord God, salvation can take place. Redemption can take place. Father Lord, release our family members, Father Lord, that could potentially be victims of these demonic altars in any church. I pray that, Lord, you will rescue them. I pray that you will redeem them. Father Lord, as we come in compliance with your word today, Lord God, and in agreement, 
I'm asking you to manifest your power in our lives. I'm asking you, Father Lord, to show us the way out, to provide a way of escape, to rescue us, Father Lord, and rescue our family members from any bewitchment, from so-called prophets. And if we have anything in our possession that belongs to these false prophets, whether water, oils, ointments, garments, scarves, handkerchiefs, talismans, Father Lord, we surrender all these items to be burned, to be destroyed forever in Jesus' mighty name. We want no agreement with these altars and we are willing to get rid of all these items as we surrender our lives to you, as we surrender our hearts, our souls and our spirits and our bodies unto you. And those who have gone so far to even engage in sensual activities with these so-called prophets. And they have received evil deposits as a result of that. Forgive them, Lord. And as you forgive them, cleanse them with your precious blood so that they will be new creations in Christ. Those who have asked for favors from these so-called prophets, these false prophets, and they are now in receipt of this demonic anointing, of these demonic gifts. Father Lord, visit them and return the demonic gifts back to honor and restore them onto the brightness of the glory, Lord God, because some of them were, were indeed walking in ignorance. They didn't know better. They were deceived. They were bewitched. Some of them taken by their parents. And that's all they know. But today, as they come to the marvelous life, light of salvation, don't cast them away, Lord. Forgive them. Reconcile us all as well back to you, Lord God. And if there is in us any, any ways that are ways of idolatry, show us, Father, while we are alive, so we can fully repent, surrender, and come to you, Lord God. And Father, I thank you. For the souls that are going to come to your presence to surrender, to give their lives to you, to live for you, to sever ties with Belial, to sever ties with your cult and with witchcraft. I thank you, Lord, for their lives, for what you are doing, for what you have done and for what you are about to do. And I pray, rescue them, uplift them, strengthen them, so that they will not go back to their vomit, Lord God, and lose their salvation and lose the gift of salvation and miss the mark. And I thank you for your presence here, Lord God. And I'm asking you, Lord God, remember me also that I will not fall into sin. Sustain me. Continue to uplift me as well and my family, Lord God. Continue to work in us. In Jesus' mighty name, amen, amen, and amen. God is talking to people here. There is two people. And you are following a certain prophetess. I'm going to describe it to you. This prophetess dressed in white. The background of a live stream is all white. Um, and the main prophecies that she does is concerning money and breakthrough. And you have been following this person for over a year. And since you have been following this so-called prophetess, you cannot sleep at night. You are played with nightmares. You are constantly anxious. And the only time you have peace is when you are attending the live stream. And I'm going to give you another thing is that one of you is a moderator for that live stream. And you are spending, I see you spending a lot of money sending gifts as you moderate, sowing money. And your children are going without much. God is releasing you today 
two people. God is releasing you, but you have to type capital me. You're going to have to break the covenant. Okay, you shouldn't be worshipping such a person as if they were your God. That is not what God wants from you. And I'm going to give you another hint, another prophetic word is that they have music as well in the background. And the live stream is very intense. It's boom, 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 boom. There are any moments of calm. It's just ding, 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 ding. And by the time you get, you leave, it's like you were in a trance. And the live stream is in the evening. Come on now, identify yourself, right, capital me. God is delivering you today. Do you want to come out of bondage and slavery, right, capital me? Surrender your life to Christ. You are not betraying them because your loyalty is to God, is not to man. Just type capital me. Come on now. So that God can deliver you. I am not going to deliver you. I'm just here as a messenger. Okay. By you writing capital me, I will stand in agreement concerning your deliverance. We all going to stand in agreement with you concerning your deliverance. But you need to write capital me. If you don't write capital me, you will continue to be in that slavery. It's you. I don't know, Sister Eliana. Do you attend such a live stream? I cannot tell you. Come on now. Write capital me. You attending this live stream. And sometimes you come here, but you go back to them all the time. And you don't understand. Why are you so gripped? So hooked? Come on now. Write capital me for God to deliver you. Come on now. Write capital me. This lady that has this live stream has big, massive, long hair like extensions. Be ye delivered in the mighty name of Jesus. But there is one more person. There is one more person. One has accepted and identified. But there is another person. And you are constantly on their stream saying, prophesy, prophesy, and you begging them to give you a word. Beloved sister, glory be to God. I stand in agreement with you in the mighty name of Jesus for your deliverance. Father Lord, those who have surrendered their lives to you, Father Lord, break the bewitchment, break the bondage, release them, set them free. That is slavery, Lord God. Set them free. Let them understand that the greatest prophecy is the Bible. The Bible is all we need, Lord God. And restore them. Reveal yourself to them so they won't be depending on any man, on any woman, for anything. Glory be to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Abba Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, glory. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Abba Father. Thank you, glory. There is a person here. You have a surgery date scheduled, but that day date has been cancelled and another date has been arranged. And they're asking you for more tests. Identify yourself, write capital me. They gave you a surgery date. You are a lady. They gave you a surgery date, but they have just called you to cancel that date and to book another one. And they are demanding from you more tests before you go under the knife. Write capital me. Very quickly, please don't waste God's time and do not waste our time either. My legs are getting tired of being seated here. I need to get up soon. Come on now. Write capital me. Very quickly. Write capital me very quickly. The reason why God has rescheduled that operation, it is because he's going to heal you. When they do those tests on you, there will be no need for operation. God is healing you. But God does not confirm you, sister. There is another person here. You need to identify yourself. There is another person here. You need to identify yourself. You are not the only one, sister. There is another person. Identify yourself. 
Beloved Sister G. Collins, I stand with you in agreement for your healing. You won't need any operation, okay? You won't need any operation. By the time they run those tests, okay, you'll be fully healed. Fully healed in Jesus' name. Glory be to God. There is a person here on this live stream. Your mother-in-law gave you some groceries. And she claimed to be is for the celebrations. And since you have eaten that food, your entire household has been very sick. But God wants to heal you and break the witchcraft and the bewitchment that is in that food because you still have some of those groceries. And these are things like potatoes, onions. They like things like that. And you have been using them to cook and you and your family have been extremely ill. And you've noticed that it's since your mother-in-law brought those things to your house as a gift. Receive the healing of your family. Your healing. Allow God to deliver you from that witchcraft, from whatever it is that was done in that food. Do not accept their food anymore. When they bring it because you can't say no, offer to any person. Give it to those who in need, but don't take it for yourself because you know now what is the source of your infirmity. Identify yourself very quickly by writing capital me. You can see that you and your family have been very ill, including your children. Write capital me very quickly. Don't waste God's time, number one. But do not waste our time either. Do it very quickly. Write capital me. <clears throat> you that receive groceries from your mother-in-law, and ever since you've all been very sick, okay? Okay? Receive your healing, okay? And don't accept anything. Or if you accept, don't eat it. Just give to those in need. Okay, sister? Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Receive a standing agreement for your healing in the mighty name of Jesus. Is there anyone here? Upon hearing the gospel of Jesus Christ today, you've made the decision that you want to surrender your life to him. You want to make a covenant with him. You are very wise, sister. Write capital me. Come on now, somebody. You that heard the gospel of Jesus Christ today, you are welcome, sister Aiavi. Okay? I, I don't know if it's a sister or a brother. I'm assuming because of the hearts is a sister. But welcome. Mohau. 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 That's it. You are welcome. Miss Gaines, you are welcome into the kingdom of Christ Jesus. Heaven rejoices saints. Okay? There is great celebration in heaven today because you decided to surrender your life to Jesus, to make a covenant with him, to make a pact with him. So I tell you what has taken place instantly in the spirit. Jesus has erased your name with his precious blood from the book of hell and eternal damnation. And behold, he has written your name in his book of life. That means the day you close your eyes in the land of the living, um, you will be translated immediately to the presence of Almighty God. There will be no condemnation for you. The verdict will be not guilty because the Lord Jesus has given your life for you, shed his blood for you. Glory be to God. Those of you that you've just surrendered your life to Christ, it doesn't stop there. You cannot return to your vomit. You cannot return to your wicked ways. You're going to have to sustain a life of holiness. Okay? There is a certain theory that is going around that once saved, forever saved. It's a lie. 
Judas Iscariot was one of the disciples of Christ Jesus. He walked with Christ. He slept beside him. He broke bread with him. He was even in charge of the collection basket. Okay, the donations for Jesus. Yet, he betrayed the Son of God for 30 silver coins. And when he realized what he did, he, he analyzed himself. So you don't want one, to be one of those people that you will betray the Son of God, still believing that you are safe. You need the Bible. You're going to have to become a student of the Word of God, a disciple. A disciple has obligations. Number one obligation, to spend time in his Word, reading, meditating, Secondly, spend much time in prayer, in fasting, okay? If you don't do those three things, the anointing will die down. And once it does, the enemy will come and possess you and it, your fate will be worse. Your condition will be worse than the first time you accepted Christ, all right? Um... Normally, I would say, oh, join a local congregation. I'm not going to say that anymore. What I'm going to say, rather, ask the Lord to show you where you need to be to grow in Christ. What congregation he wants you to join so that you can be baptized in the water, which is a, an important step for a believer. Um, and if you still want to be on this live stream to grow in Christ, we are always assembled here, Mondays to Saturdays. United Kingdom hour, to be more precise, City of London, from 1 p.m. to 2.30 p.m., sometimes longer like today because I have more time to spare, okay? And um, join us to grow in Christ, okay? Um. I would also advise you to buy a King James Bible if you are an English speaking person so that you can have the scriptures to study for yourself. Okay? And if you speak any other language, for instance, my mother tongue is Portuguese, I have the Bible also in Portuguese. I have both. There is nothing wrong with that. Okay? By all means, become a scholar of the word of God. A, a student, you need to know the word so that you can find yourself approved before God and man. All right? I would like to also invite you to subscribe to our YouTube page because if you, for instance, you are not able to attend the live stream because you have to be, in, in, you know, at work, or something happens, we have a channel on YouTube that is a backup, okay? Um, you can um, go there and all of the live streams are posted there after, okay? My Bible in Portuguese is very old, was given by my paternal grandmother, and it was her Bible. So if you've seen my Bible, it's old. I don't even know if they still sell it. So I won't recommend that one. But guess what? It's the only Bible I'm comfortable with. Some pages are just almost vanished. But hey, that is my Bible. But a good Portuguese Bible is Almeida Corrigida. That is a good one. Almeida Corrigida. It's a good one for Portuguese speaking people. As for the rest, I don't know, saints. I cannot recommend. But for English speaking people. The King James Bible is wonderful. The Nada Miyakari Daikeni. Beloved saints, um, if you would like to donate to this ministry, the information is on my Bible, on my bio, sorry. <laughs> and um, you will see the PayPal um, account there that you can donate. But only donate if you want to be a blessing for the furtherance of the gospel through this channel, okay? It is not a must, it's not an obligation. It's something that you do if you really are touched by the Holy Spirit. There is no financial 
um, transaction going on here. It's just a collection, a donation if you can be of help. And if you can't, you are still blessed anyway. All right. Um, to subscribe to the YouTube channel also, just go to my bio and you will see the YouTube icon. Click and it will take you straight to our YouTube channel. I would also like to remind you that beware of, of fake people creating fake profiles using my name and this page for extortion. Okay. If you are befriended by them, followed by them, and they send you a message, report and block. I will never ask you for anything, okay? All of the donations are here if you want to, but it's not a must, all right? I have to put the disclaimer there. Um, before you go, saints, let me pray for you, but let me also uh, welcome those of you who are here for the first time. We are happy to have you. Welcome into our midst. And if it's you are here for the first time, write capital me so we can greet you and we can welcome you as one of our own. Okay? Hallelujah. I would like to see you and say welcome to you. Ayaha, welcome. Charm, lovely, welcome. Sister Sonia, welcome. Elivi, welcome, welcome. Av. Welcome, saints. I am delighted that you came. And I know that the Holy Spirit called you here, including Brother Brian Devereux. I use a 9-3 something. You are very welcome. And we are happy to have you in our midst. And we hope you will come back and join us. Okay? Hallelujah. And before you go, I would like to remind you that our corporate fasting starts um, on the 15th of this month of January and it will end on the 31st and um, it will end with Holy Communion. Okay, saints? Glory be to God. Um, Fridays are consecration days. So if you would like to consecrate any anointing oil holy oil or perhaps your children you would like to consecrate or your career whatever it is that will be done on friday and is free of charge all you need to do is bring your own oil your only your own water place it in front of the screen and we will stand together in agreement for consecration all right um i think that is all saints let us pray because I want to pray for you before you leave. Father Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus, I thank you for your servants that came today. They came because you summoned them here. They came here, Father Lord, to be in your presence. And I thank you for their lives. And as they leave, Lord God, forgive us our sins and transgressions and iniquities. Be a wall of fire and a protection around your children. Father, Lord, deliver them from every hour of accidents, fires. Deliver them, Father, Lord, from every wicked and demonic plot from the kingdom of darkness. Lord Jesus, I cover each one of these precious saints with your precious blood. And I'm asking you, Father, order their steps so that they will always be at the right place and at the right time. Father, Lord, I'm asking you as they leave, don't let them live without your presence, but rather, Lord God, baptize them with your Holy Spirit. Let the blessings of Abraham in Deuteronomy 28 fall upon each one of them. According to their needs, Lord God, supply the needs. Heal those who are ill. Provide for those who are going through homelessness, joblessness, that are going through hunger, Lord God. I pray that your provision will be with them. I pray that you will, Father Lord, and camp around them, armies of angels, to protect them and to deliver them from all evil. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray, amen, amen, and amen. Father Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus, I'm asking you today, touch with your precious hands, beloved sister Gail Ned, Lori Nobles Gray, family members Anthony, Caden, JC Nick, Daddy Leo, Laterica, Brenda Pizarro, Geraldine Collins, 
Selena Bradley, Tyrone Harris, Giovianca Gregorius, Jalimar Diamond, Adrian Galloway, Alice Codeo, AGC Wholesales, Joana Victorino, Byron Dumas, Carolyn Chambers, Ketamila Cole, Rekita Wola, parents Raymond Renova, family members Kainley, Keisha, Kelvin, Kaylee, Cameron, Lathan Pritt, Harold Richardson, Dolores Edwards Harding, Jacqueline Bogle and Household, Brenda Togo and her sister Joy, Mrs. Erin and her household, Sheila Ray, Junie Giussali, Chantel Small, Karen Lidacia Chambers. Father Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus, I'm asking you today receive the tidings and the offerings of all these saints. Father Lord, you promised them. In the book of Malachi 3.10, if they remember your house to bring meat to your house, that you will, Father Lord, rebuke the devour and the canker worm and the grasshopper of their finances and of every affairs of their life. So, Father, I pray that today you will not only rebuke the devour and the canker worm and the grasshopper, but as you promised them, you will open the floodgates of your heavenlies to bestow upon them such a blessing that they, don't, they won't have enough storehouse to contain it. Father Lord, I speak over their lives. Deuteronomy 28. They shall always be the head and not the tail. They shall always be above and never beneath. They shall always be at the top. They will lend to many nations, but borrow from none. When the enemies come against them one way, they shall flee seven ways, because that is your promises for them. That is their inheritance, Father Lord. Father Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus, visit also Sister Elaine Todd, Rose Beba, Emily Jackson, Lorian Baker, Jordan Eganda, Ruth Lua, Iro Sport, our products chosen for such a time as this. Venice Epton, Jasmine Mitchell, Simone Morgan, Antoinette Lewis, Michelle Wallace and husband Wade, Natasha Fogu, children Jordan and Junior, Genoebi Hair Care, Asila Preston, Children Tristan and Ryan, Mama Hurley, Roberta Davis, Karen Adelie Moss, Joyce Backus, Mariam Freddy, Deidre Sanderson, Shanette Jenkins, San Nasia, Craig White, Tropic Baby Tick, Daughters Killian and Anisha, Angie Newman, Felician Toe, Noel Lucian, Evolet, Eve, Noah and Noella, Taz Flumo, Tamisha Brown, a.k.a. Golden Lattes, Tarmisha Hayes and Hayes Household, Shimori Chanel, Kim Lehman, Andrew Apostolo from Value Stores, Rachel Reed, Mrs. Martin, Selena Bradley, Father in the mighty name of Jesus, receive into your hands, Lord God, the tidings and the offerings and the gifts of these precious saints. And Father Lord, I'm asking you today, fulfill your promise to them, according to Malachi 3.10. And Father, rebuke the devourer in their finances, the canker worm, the grasshopper, Father Lord, and bestow upon them such a blessing that they won't have enough storehouse to contain it. Father Lord, I'm asking you, fulfill your promises to them, Lord God, also in Deuteronomy 28. And I speak over their lives. They shall forever be the head and never the tail. They shall always be above and never beneath. They shall lend to many nations, but borrow from none. Father Lord, I'm asking you today, let your mantle of excellence fall upon them, Lord God, and divine favor, open doors, divine connections. Father Lord, let the wealth of the wicked be transferred to them, Lord God, and show them the hidden treasures of this world and allow them to possess their possession by fire and by force in Jesus' mighty name. Father Lord, visit also beloved sister Erin Jones, parents Brenda and George, Elizabeth Thaddeus, her daughter Sarah Oguto, Stacy Cunningham, Jewel Sample and husband Dishon, Amanda Bacchus, Wafisa Bacchus, Titi Ture, and daughter Abibatu, Elizabeth Escamilla and daughter Lilibeth, Kelvin Calix, Tuana Watson, Farah Hendrickson, Brenda Togo, sister um, Joy, Gail Anisu, Sister Michelle and her ministry, Spetile Endless Malale, Daughter Vunene, Mother Busiziwe, 
Sister Bongi Kile, Brother Sidney, Nisi B, Sister Doris, Shane Furtado, Kechi Kamara, Abimbola Akanu, Kazai Films, Daniel Elang, Lesinga Holcrom, Selena Bradley, Toya Thorpe, Nathalie Bish, Kazai Furtado, and Neilani. Father Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus, remember thy faithful servants, Lord God, and their tidings and their offerings and their gifts. Receive it into your hands, Lord God, and fulfill your promise that you made them in the book of Malachi 3.10. And rebuke the devourer in their finances, the conqueror, the grasshopper. Rebuke, Father Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. And open the floodgates of your heavenly Lord God. And bestow upon them such a blessing that they won't have enough storehouse to contain it. Father Lord, I speak over their lives, Deuteronomy 28. They shall always be the head and never the tail. They shall always be above and never beneath. The enemies shall come one way, but they shall flee seven ways from your children. I speak as well over their lives, Lord God, that, Father Lord, for as long as they walk the land of the living, they shall walk as the full manifestation of all the blessings of Abraham and Deuteronomy 28. They shall be like the palm trees planted by the river banks. They will never wither nor dry. They shall yield good fruit in season and out of season. And as far as the sun is from the earth, so shall poverty, infirmity, joblessness, affliction, shame, reproach be far away from them and their households in Jesus' mighty name. I speak over their lives. Money will touch money in their bank accounts. The bank accounts that they used to sow into this ministry, they will never wither. They won't dry. But they shall always be filled and prosperous. They shall always have heavenly resources and miraculous um, streams of income in Jesus' mighty name. I speak over their lives, Lord God, that these saints, Father Lord, they shall always, Father Lord, be on top as it is written in the book of Deuteronomy 28. Father Lord, enlarge their coast, just like how you did with Father Abraham. Father Lord, I'm asking you today that you even, the Father Lord, the wicked will bless them. They shall find favor wherever they go, Lord God, and they will never be put to shame. In Jesus' mighty name, amen, amen, and amen. Saints of Almighty God, go in peace. May the good Lord continue to shine his face upon you and be merciful unto you. And as you go, remember, you are more than a conqueror in Jesus' name. You can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. And if God is for you, who can be against you? Saints, you are unstoppable. You are unmovable. You are unshakable in the mighty name of Jesus. And remember, one with God is the majority. Shalom. And I'll see you tomorrow. God.